and welcome back. My name is Cassie Essery and this is Learn With Us. Today I am giving you some of my favorite teacher hacks that other teachers have shared with me throughout the years and, and some things that I just kind of figured out and I'm really, really excited to share this with you because as you know, this is all about hoping to make your job easier because we work so hard. So I just really hope that this helps you. Also, this video is in honor of my post about the cans that went kind of viral and I was totally freaking out. Thank you, Teachers Pay Teachers. They reposted one of my pictures, a teacher hack, and it kind of went crazy. So I'm super excited and that kind of inspired this video for me to show you some other things because that seemed to be a popular choice. So let's get started. So this first tip inspired this video. It is using cans to hold your desks together. Desks, tables, whatever. I have three or four different types of desks in here and it still works. Of course, they're not completely even, but it definitely holds them together and does the job so that the desks aren't moving and wandering all day long and you have to put them together every 20 minutes. So let me show you. As you can see, you can use many different types of cans to hold your desks together. I prefer to use tuna cans because they can actually hold four legs together and work perfectly in the middle of groups. However, you can use other large cans and even a regular eight ounce can to hold two legs together. This is a serious time and sanity saver, not to mention cheap. Now this second hack is for you teachers who get a lot of pictures and love notes from your students but you don't know what to do with them or they're really proud of something that they made and they want you to show it off. Here's a solution. My desk is magnetic so if you have anything in your room that is magnetic just throw some magnets on there and this is now the display board for my students work and their presence in all of their pictures so I can actually enjoy them and not just have a pile of them on my desk. So they bring me their cute little notes and they just stick it on there. Not too bad. I leave these up about a week, maybe a week and a half and then recycle them. My kids, if you're watching, some of them I do keep, the really special ones, but I just can't keep them all. And so this way I get to appreciate them and then make room for new ones. This also works if you have a push pin board stick it up there, maybe even find a couple really cheap cookie sheets that you can mount on the wall and then that is your display board for student work. Could totally work. Another teacher hack that I am crazy about is using these plastic Ikea plates for pretty much everything. A teacher a couple years ago bought me two stacks of them. I'll link them down below but these are so durable and you can use them for anything. I usually use these for like tempera paint or projects with glitter, all sorts of things because they have this nice ridge that keeps things contained, but they are so easy to wash and it's okay if they get messy, they can't break. They're just amazing. So if you don't have some of these, get some because they are reusable for years and years and years. I've had these for four years and they pretty much look new. So these are a must in the teacher hack world. The possibilities are endless. So this next hack is a little weird, but it's totally awesome for the sake of efficiency and always having what they need in one step. So this is the thing. You have a whiteboard, drill a hole in it, attach a binder ring and a sock. This doubles as a marker carrier and an eraser. That way kids can just go and grab it out of the bin and they have what they need and it is beautiful. You have everything you need right here. So this next hack is for things that you want to reuse over and over again. A lot of people know that if you laminate paper, you can use a dry erase marker on it, but I don't really like a dry erase because it erases a little too easily for some projects. So I really like to use vis a vis these are the markers they used for those overhead projectors and the only way you can get it off is with water. So I just take this and I run it under the sink and away it goes. So this is a really cool trick if you need to see their work or if you are updating a board maybe once a week like 
learning targets, something like that. That's what I use this one for. And it's super simple and really easy. So this next hack is one of my favorites and I'm so excited to share it with you. If you didn't know, you can actually print right onto construction paper. You just have to feed it through the bypass tray. Then you put whatever kind of cover you want for a booklet in upside down and click copy. Then after it's printed, all you have to do is fold it in half to create the cover of your booklet. I know, amazing, right? Now that you have your cover, all you need to do is to put the papers inside and staple it. And now you have a booklet with a beautiful cover and it's all put together. Another hack with printing with construction paper, if you have a project where you have several things that you need printed on the same color of paper, then just have two copies and put it on the scanner. When you feed it through the bypass tray, it will spit it out and now you have double the copies on the same piece of paper. This next hack is for gluing pieces of paper into a notebook. Normally they are way too big and they stick out and they're just messy. So let me show you how to do this. So start by scanning the original piece that you want in a smaller size. You have to select reduce to reduce the size to about 85%. When it prints, you'll have a little bit of extra on the sides because now it's smaller than that original piece of paper. So just cut it off. And now your piece of paper is the correct size to glue into any standard notebook or composition book. This is super awesome for interactive notebooks if you're familiar with Avid. You can actually do this on your computer too. When you go to print a document, just click the print button, scroll down in the settings and find scale. You can now customize it just like we did on the printer and set it to about 85%. Now see that there's extra space along the sides that you can cut off and fit into a notebook. This last hack is super awesome for those pieces of butcher paper or anchor charts that you want to laminate, but they don't quite fit. So what do you do? Just fold it in half and feed it through the laminator as normal. After you've cut off the extra, take an X-Acto knife and split the seam all the way around except on the fold. Unfold it and now you are ready to rock. I especially love this because as I mentioned before, you can write right onto laminated paper with a dry erase marker. It's super awesome for student activities as well as anchor charts and you can reuse it over and over again. Not to mention, it erases super easily. So that's it, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here and I hope that this video helps you and makes your teacher life easier. If you had any aha moments or things that you'd never thought of before, then please comment down below. I would love to hear from you and hear what helps you out because that's the purpose of this. I just wanna help you and make your life as a teacher easier and more efficient. If you like this video and you think you wanna stick around, then just subscribe down below. I also have an Instagram account at learn with us. Makes sense. I post other teacher stuff on there as well as some awesome things that my school does and hopefully it will inspire you to do some fun things with your class. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye.